This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Ashwin, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which uh, the rebellion continues. Fixing Ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Ading Or. This week on Fixing South Sudan, we explore the important role arts and culture plays in any given society and can works of literature help fix South Sudan. With us for the show, Mr. Puka Yuel Mayen, a poet writer, diplomat, and a social entrepreneur with a passion for education. He recently launched uh, two books, Kindred, it's right here, mm -hmm. and No More Betrayals, it's right here, and we are happy to welcome her to this show to talk about her work. It's a pleasure to welcome her to Fixing South Sudan. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, viewers of Fixing South Sudan. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. Let's start with these uh, two projects. Mm. They have been a long time coming. And recently, uh, you launched the two books. What can you say about them now that they have seen the light of day? <laughs> I'm relieved. Um, I'm happy. Um, and um, I think the two are very personal to me. But um, one, No More Betrayals, I think is my diary um, on the journey of South Sudan for the last 14 years. Um, and the other one, Kindred, is my own personal journey. And how much support have you gotten from uh, the books? They have been published, they are self-published. Yes. And quite a few people have been able to... Uh, uh, to get them, so what kind of feedback and support are you getting? I'm actually overwhelmed and happy with the feedback that I've received so far. I've launched the books um, on the 18th of August, which was, um, um, by chance, it was the um, um, anniversary of the Torit Mutiny. Um, and I've launched it, and I was able to um, get people in attendance from all walks of life and from across generations of South Sudan. Um, I was able to also sell most of the books that I have, have, have brought to Juba. Um, I'm actually, when people say that we don't read, I don't know. I think we read. If it's about us, we read it. If it's about our experiences, we are interested about it. So I was, I was quite um, happily surprised by, by the reception that these two books have received so far. Let's get into some of the let's get into some of the themes. Uh, often we hear about nationalism, mm -hmm. patriotism, sacrifice, and even uh, healing. Mm -hmm. And so, which out of the, these poems, which one speaks to you more? I think, for me, um, no more betrayals and kindred. Both of them are mosaic of of of, of feelings, of experiences. Um, um, kindred is on life and No More Betrayals is on our experiences as South Sudan. So um, I don't think that there is one poem that will speak better than the others because they are talking about different things. But and, and, and speaking about South Sudan, uh, what would you like to say about what you are trying to depict about the country, uh, the, the history and also the present? What can you say about that? Um, for me, I would like to give um, a picture about what we have been going through. Um, but um, an important issue to me is nation building. Um, and for me, 
the most important aspect of nation building is to build a national identity. And this is something that I think is one of our biggest challenges and our biggest, um, our biggest um, opportunity in the same time. Um, as we were struggling for independence, we had a common an enemy. And so we were basically um, um, galvanized or, or catalyzed by the fact that we had a common enemy. But now that we are independent, we need a common vision and we need a common identity so that we can forge um, into a prosperous, forge the country into a prosperous future. So for me, national identity um, means that we, we need to have pride in our history. We need to have knowledge about our connectivity as a people. Um, we need to um, also remember our shared sacrifices and struggles for this country. How does literature achieve that and how does your work contribute towards building that national identity? I, I think education in any country is basically the most, the, the number one objective of ed education is to build um, responsible citizens or citizens who will contribute to that society. And so because of that, I think every society has to um, its literature and its civic education has to be coming from its own values, from its own experiences. As South Sudan, I think we, we right now, um, in our education system, we are teaching things, we are borrowing things from our neighbors. So I, I, I think as, as a writer and as other South Sudanese writers, it's important for us to write about our history, identity, and etc., so that we can build strong citizens um, in the future that will be grounded in this country and grounded in serving the values of this country. And uh, when we look at uh, your poems, uh, the books, they are a collection of poems mm -hmm. written at various points in time, some when you were in America, some while you were in South Sudan. How do you actually bring them together? Um, I think as South Sudanese, we have because of our experience, we, ha we, ha we had the, I don't know if it's a fortune or a misfortune of, of having multiple identities and multiple experiences. And, but to me, that is the beauty. The diversity of experiences makes us who we are and makes me who I am. Um, I bring it together and I'm able to bring it together because um, since I, I, uh, I've been growing up, South Sudan and the struggle of South Sudan has been the most prominent thing. And as a generation, this is the most prominent thing is, was the, you know, the war for liberation in, in, in this generation and also this, this um, fight for independence, this, this actualization of independence. So I, I think for me, I was grounded in as, as, a, as a child of South Sudanese growing in diaspora, as a child of patriots, I was grounded in this love for country. So the thread is, is, is for me, is, is very natural. It's very natural that um, being in, 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 the, in the United States growing up and thinking about South Sudan and what was happening, um, the famine in 98, you know, the CPA, et cetera. So I, I was always reflecting back, looking back to my roots, because I think that's, um, this is the foundational thing in terms of my identity, being a South Sudanese. If you look at our various experiences as South Sudanese, uh, we have been all over the world, exposed to various civilizations, mm -hmm. and then now we have come back. Mm -hmm. We want to build this one thing called a national, cohesive national identity. Mm -hmm. Isn't it very difficult to do it when we are drawing from a lot? Because there is nothing that appears to be authentically sourced in its Or it is there and it has not come um, to the surface. I, I, I What's would, your take on that? I would beg to differ because I think there, there is so much that is authentically South Sudanese. What we need to do is we hearken back to our values. We, if, if we make the mistake of trying to, 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 to use other people's values, then we are not grounded in our own identity. Um, I think our experience outside um, is valuable in that it equips us with tools. You know, education is part of the tools, technology is part of the tools, but all these tools have to be utilized in a way that serves us. Um, so 
I think it's important for us to go back into our societies, our communities, our traditions, our cultures, because those are built around values and important values. Um, important values like dignity for everyone. Um, that is very important because um, our traditional societies are organized in that manner. Um, important values of reciprocity, um, of, of, of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. I don't think that those are things that we need to import from our side. I think it's something that we, we need to look back into our societies, into our communities, into our people living in villages and how do you live and we learn from that. And, and these values we come and we make it central to how we, we develop ourselves as individuals, but we develop ourselves as, as a nation also. So as a nation, we are a nation in search of ourselves, but as an author, a poet, would you say that you have found your voice and that out of all that contradictions, there is one way that you are leading us to? <laughs> um, I, I, I think... I think I've, I've, my voice, fortunately, has never been muted. But what I've, I'm trying to do with, 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 some of these, um, with some of these humble writings is to actually lend a voice to the voiceless, um, lend a voice to our nation in terms of um, giving our narratives um, and our experiences a chance to be seen and, 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 and for us to even, for ourselves to, 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 you know, if you don't reflect on your experience, sometimes you don't understand the magnitude of your achievement. Um, and if you don't reflect on your experiences, you don't understand the lessons to be learned from your failures. So I think for, for me, I want to lend up my voice to us to kind of reflect on some of these things. Um, there is the personal, but there is also um, the collective um, in, 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 in these books. And in the collective, how much of it is inspired by South Sudan and the various stages uh, of South Sudan? Because I know that uh, we hear about the crises mm -hmm. and you, know, you reflecting about them. How much of the book is informed by South Sudan? I think all of No More Betrayals is informed by South Sudan. Um, uh, there's a tribute to SPLA as a liberation war um, heroes. Um, there is a poem about referendum. And I, I, I think what I wanted to do with that poem is I was listening to my own internal debates about referendum, um, about the right to choose. And, um, you know, you remember <laughs> uh, that sign. Um, about the experience that we had as a people, about uh, I remember being here and um, standing in a line since 2 a.m. waiting to vote. And I remember the jubilation in all of the streets of Juba. Um, but then also I remember the expectations and I wanted to also put this. There's a poem called July 9th, after, until July 9th. And it talks about our people's expectations of independence, of what will happen afterwards. Um, and so for me, I call it a patriot's diary. Uh, and it's all about South Sudan, but I think it also can speak to other people who, um, who are from nations that are struggling for, for, for self-determination, um, for peoples who are going or have gone through war. I think the same the same common themes are there um, from the experiences of war. It's a good place to take a break. Thank you. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, passport photo, Stand up comedy, painting, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dol Comedia Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. With me, Mading Or. Joining us for the show is Mr. Puk Ayuel Man, a poet, writer, diplomat, and social entrepreneur 
who has a passion for education and the author of two books, Kindred and No More Betrayals. We come back for the final round. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. We talk of fixing Sassanet. Mm -hmm. And if we do so through arts and culture, through literature, mm -hmm. it's going to take us a long time. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the contribution of literature towards nation building? I think an important aspect of for forging this national identity will be um, stirring up a national debate, um, a dialogue on some of the important issues. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, the fact that one of our ills is tribalism. So I think the role of literature and, and, and arts is, is, is to basically invoke a conversation. Um, perhaps for my experiences, for my different experiences, we understand our identity as, as one thing versus another. For me personally, I, I've been um, fortunate to be from two different um, tribes. Uh, my mother is from one tribe and my father from another tribe. And if you read this book, um, you will see that my name is Apunga Yuel Mayan. But you, you, you read one of the uh, poems um, and you will find uh, Bari words in it. Like there's a poem called Mundari Girl. And I, I, I borrow a lot from the Bari language to describe the Mundari Girl. Um, there is also, you know, some poems that are sprinkled with Tongwonyang here and there, and I bring in also that culture. And I think there, you know, there is no, um, there is no antagonism between our cultures. Uh, from experience, I know that a lot of our cultures are similar, and a lot of our languages are even similar. So I think we, we. As an artist, I will celebrate the diversity of my identity, but also I'm celebrating the diversity of the identities of South Sudan. And I think it's my role to, to show the similarities and not focus on, on just uh, the, the disparities or the, the differences. Uh, there is a campaign that I started, I don't know if you saw, where Six Sook campaign. And there is one Suk Suk, you know, the, in, 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 in war is called the Mujuk. The black and white, a joke, a joke or a joke or uh, like, uh, and I, I posted that on my Facebook account, and I got a lot of feedback. The Nuer have the same, the Kakwa have the same, the Bari have the same, the Mundari have the same, Lutuko have the same, and each each of our culture has the same beat, and they call it different thing. That means the same thing, black and white, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so I think this is our role as artists. Uh, we need to celebrate the beauty of things in, within our cultures and also embrace the similarities and, 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 and shine a light on the similarities that we have as a people. Because at the end of the day, we are one people. There are two competing thoughts. There are those who say South Sudan is uh, made of one nation, one people. Mm -hmm. And there are those who say it's a house of nationalities. Mm -hmm is not one thing, and diversity can be a strength. Mm -hmm. But we are different people in one country. Which one speaks to you most? Um, I beg to differ. I, I think with both, because I think, I think we are... Um, at the end of the day, humanity started where? In Africa. At the end of the day, our source is one. At South Sudanese, if we look at it historically, there is a poem called They Called Me Kush here. And um, Kush as, as, as a civilization. Um, at, at the end of the day, as South Sudanese, most of us came from the, from the same source. We had um, a similar pattern of migration, but we arrived in South Sudan at different times. And you see these similarities in our languages. Um, and so I, I would say we are one people who have diversified and now we are trying to live under one umbrella, which is one nation. At the same time, we are, I don't think our differences are quite distinct. There are two different groupings. We have the Bantus and we have the Nilots. 
and then you have the nylo hematic in the middle, you know. But um, if you look at our languages, you would know that the majority of South Sudanese come from one lineage, you know, from one, from one source. So I would want to challenge us to look more into our similarities. I think some cultural anthropologies or linguistic people need to look into the similarities in our languages and, and need to kind of um, hearken us back to our common identity, our common origin. It's important to have a common um, story of origin as a nation. It's very important to forge that. How easy is it to overcome those differences? Because we know, because of the difficult history that we have studied with as a young nation, we have gone through crises that have exacerbated the differences. And some of your poems talk about that. Um, so what would you say is the hope of the nation? Yes, we had a common identity during the struggle, and then sharing the cake has in, uh, brought us together, and then conflict have started around power, power struggle, and that has sort of created division in the nation. It's interesting, because as an individual, uh, or as a society, struggle or conflict comes, arises, why? It arises because of competition. Competition over resources, um, competition over um, power, competition over... But the bottom line is, how do I feed my family? The bottom line is, if I'm part of this society, am I um, equally important in that society in the way that I'm treated? Is there equity, you know, in terms of distribution of wealth or resources or power? This is the bottom line. Um, the bottom line is not that uh, you are from the other side of the river and I'm from this side of the river, I'm better than you. Or As long as I can feed my family and I can live in dignity and, and I, I would feel that my rights are catered for, I don't have a problem with you. Um, and, and so for me, what it boils down to is, is, is for us to build... Um, a country that treats each one of us equally. It, it treats us equally in terms of the opportunities that it affords us. It treats us equally in terms of, of, of the services that it gives us. It treats us equally in terms of rule of law. As long as we can build this type of nation, I think each one of us will find their place and right. each one of us will be happy. Right. Why don't you give us a taste of some of your poems? Um, it's called Beloved, um, and Beloved is South Sudan. With tears in my eyes and sadness in my heart, I leave you, Beloved. On the wings of the Memphis, your day of darkening, I flee, plucked, as if a fruit ripe for savoring. For the watchmen guarding your precious gates, Prayers to imbue them with valor flood my heart. For the people besieged within your walls, soft whisperings of sweeter tomorrows echo with my every breath. And the watchman says, Why? Why so soon, my dear? Go, I will await your return. They think they are devouring our beloved, but there is a divine plan to recede her. There is a divine plan to recede her. And I say, I will go, but linger close enough to oil your lamb, kindle your hope, and praise your valor. Now, give us an interpretation of it. It's happening. You are writing it uh, when you were fleeing the war in 2013. <laughs> you were on the plane. What can you say about this poem? Um, with tears in my eyes. And I actually wrote it on the plane with tears in my eyes. Um, I was reflecting on the fact that there are fortunate few who have the opportunity to flee. But the m many, the many, like my little cousins, my nephews, my aunts, you know, that we are leaving behind. But in the same time, I think my heart I've also left it here because this is my beloved. 
And, and, and so I was projecting into the future that, that although there is some sort of um, wave of destruction that is going by, um, there will be remnants and there will be seeds. And we are the seeds that builds this nation. And so if you listen to the end, I say I will go, but not too far. You were hesitant. To I was hesitant to go. Um, I think I was actually forced by my mother to board the plane. <laughs> I wanted to stay. Uh, but she, because they came, my mom and my other siblings came. And, and so I was forcing them to go, but she was pulling me to go with her. So I just went to Nairobi. And I stayed, I think, until January 18th, I came back um, of that same year. So it just shows you where the heart is. Let me get uh, your last thought on the best way of empowering the women. It is something many people talk about. There are various movements that have mm -hmm. uh, sprung up, talking about girl child, even affirmative action. What do you think is the, and, and then we talk about the percentage that has been allocated by the government. Uh, for women, <laughs> would you say is the best way of uh, uplifting uh, the women and empowering them? Because you do talk about the role of education. Yes, you know this this issue is is really interesting because I I I, I there are, like you said many waves of feminist movements and and feminist thoughts on this issue, but for me I I, I like to see it from a different perspective. The fact of the matter is women are more than 60% of the population of South Sudan. And as a nation, if we want to build, if we want to prosper, we need the contribution of women. And in, in, in different aspects. If we go to the markets here, uh, if we go to even go driving by the roadside, you will see that the women are actually are, are the most productive sector of our society. In, even in urban settings, and even in, 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 in the rural settings. And so the important, the important way that we can empower a woman in our society, I think, um, first, yes, there is education. And um, um, I, I do a lot of work in education, but I, I also think it's important for us to focus on the boy child as well as focusing on the girl child because we want a society that is balanced at the end of the day. Um, but then we, we need to, to work to change attitudes, cultural, societal attitudes towards the position of women and the role of women. Because um, even if we give them affirmative action and they don't feel that their role is, 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 is especially in the civil service and etc. if they, are, they don't, don't, don't feel that they have a dignified position or the family doesn't even feel that they have it treated equally or, or in a dignified manner, then women will pull away. If they feel like there is harassment in the workplace, they will shy away. So we need to make sure that um, we build conducive environments for them to excel um, and I think we need to also, as women, as a woman, I think it's important for us to be role models, visible role models for the youth um, and, and, and for, for the, the girl child to understand that the sky is the limit. I can be an author, um, I can be a diplomat, I can be an ambassador. And I think um, we need more positive role models um, that are visible um, and, 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 and and given, given the weight, given the opportunity to speak and to inspire. Changing attitudes. Yes. Thanks for being on Fixing Sausage. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.